stay on point. <laughs> no! This is Morning Eggnog. We refuse to stay this on is... point. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. This is Morning Eggnog. My name is James Wong. As always, Caleb. Good morning, everybody. So, Caleb, I've gone to a lot of fast food restaurants. Okay, yeah, me too. Um, more than I should. More than, more than we definitely should. We went to Taco Bell last night. I mean, it's delicious. I mean, kind of. They it, took a lot of stuff off the menu at Taco Bell, so it's not as good as it used to be. Yeah. You I, can't get the steak case redo anymore. Yeah, that's true. But I did try the, the nacho taco. That's not bad. For the dollar. I was actually pretty impressed. I've been getting the, uh, the chicken grillers or whatever. Mm. They're quote unquote new, but they're just the chicken, the chicken chipotle ranch griller. That's what they used to be called. They just changed the name. They changed the name and made them smaller. (laughs) And made them smaller. They're probably the same price. Uh, Well, I mean, it is what it is. It's the times. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. But I have never found the most horrifying things people have claimed to find in their fast food from Insider.com. Oh, crap. (laughs) I don't like these. I don't like like thinking about what could be in fast food. So when was the last time you heard KFC? It's been a minute for me. Uh, it's probably been about two months since I got something at KFC. It's really good. What I normally get there is I get the uh, potato bowls. So it's mashed potatoes oh. with chicken and cheese and corn. Oh, yeah. I like mixed up food. It's gross. But according to the Daily Mail, a customer received a chicken meal only to discover that he had allegedly received a breaded chicken heart. <laughs> okay. It's not horrible. It's not the worst thing. This no. is number one. I mean, that... Happens. The man complained to KFC Australia on their Facebook page. Ah, sharing, that's the problem right there. Yeah, no, it's Australia. It's probably a kangaroo heart. <laughs> it's probably kangaroo and you just don't know it. Sharing photos of his meal saying, uh, KFC, can you explain why in the world I'm getting <laughs> what looks like a chicken heart in my food? They didn't. Well, this is a dumb article now. They didn't include a photo. And Colonel Sanders. <sighs> but anyways, he, was, he asked for a full refund. Well, I mean, uh, that's probably acceptable. I mean, it's only like, what, 12 bucks, 15 bucks? It can't be that much. I think it would be acceptable for that. This is the most recent disturbing extra topping we allegedly discovered by a woman in Langhorn, Pennsylvania. Earlier this month, she claimed that she took a bite out of a sandwich before discovering that a dead rodent had been baked into the bun. (laughs) Oh. The woman sued Chick-fil-A for more than $50,000, con- claiming negative side effects like emotional distress, anxiety, and nightmares about the whole ideal. Earlier this month, Chick-fil-A told Insider, the guest allegations are being investigated. This is an ongoing legal matter. Therefore, we cannot comment any further at this time. Oh. Rodents. A veteran says he ordered a triple stacker burger at a military-owned outlet of the fast food chain in Hawaii at Burger King in December in 2010. He told the Associated Press that while eating the hamburger, he he unknowingly bit into a needle or wire that pierced his tongue and caused it to bleed. Oh. A few days later, he said that he saw a doctor due to the severe stomach pain and found that out that he had ingested was a piece, and that what pierced his stomach, his what? Out that his in- intestine, intestine was, was pierced by a needle. I'm retarded. Or wire. I like how it's needle or wire. Like, they don't know what it is. And he was put on bed rest for a week. This case was in the courts for a while, and in 2014... According to Law 360, he was segre- he was sanctioned for failing to show up to court. He didn't show up, so he didn't make him any money. It makes you wonder what that was about. Uh, Anyways, no. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm, I'm kind of sad by this list. A piece of human flesh with fingerprints attached was the not-so-appetizing add-on allegedly found on Arby's Chicken Sandwich in Ohio in 2005, according to the Associated Press. Must have been around Cincinnati. (laughs) (laughs) Not, Not to throw anybody in Ohio under the bus, but there you go, Cincinnati. Now this is very believable. A dead mouse supposedly found it in a Subway sandwich. Yeah. I can, I can get on that. And then supposedly the last one is a bit gross. An unwrapped condom found in Burger King sandwich. 
Yeah. So whenever you're eating something from a fast food restaurant, remember, uh, always check it first. Yeah, there's nothing Especially wrong. if there's pickles on it. Then just give them to me. I'm the pickle friend. I love pickles on sandwiches. I do too. I don't know. I don't get people that don't like Every pickle. group has a pickle friend, I, supposedly. I'm the pickle friend. Like, mm. my friends don't like pickles, so they give me all their pickles. That's weird. I think I agree. Yeah, because, I mean, every time I go... I, honestly, one of my favorite burgers right now is actually Wendy's, the double stack. Oh, it's super good. Because they still put lettuce and tomatoes and everything on it. And Burger King. Like, those are my favorite burgers just because they still put lettuce and tomatoes and pickles and everything on them still. I think the Junior Bacon Cheeseburger from Wendy's is my, still my favorite because it's lettuce, tomato, mustard, ketchup, mayo. Yeah. Well, if you ask for the works at Wendy's, they'll put the ketchup, those ketchup tomato or mm. the, uh, the tomato. I keep saying tomato. Tomato. <sighs> the ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise on it. And pickles. And pickles. The works. The works. The works. Don't ask for the works at five, guys, because you get fried mushrooms. Ooh. That actually probably would be pretty pretty good. Possibly. I just oh, You have I, to like fried mushrooms first. You do have to like fried mushrooms, and they can only be like a certain amount. Like exactly. maybe two or three. People that like raw onion on their sandwiches are weird to me. Yeah. If you cooked onion on a sandwich, not too bad. Raw onion, it's not I'm not a fan. I guess it depends on what you want for flavor. Like, if you want bold onion, then yeah. Ugh. You're disgusting. Oh, I don't mind. I don't mind uncooked bold onion. Bold onion. Mm, good onions. All right. Passenger flight turned around in Sudan when stowaway cat attacks pilot. <laughs> Wait, what? A pilot? It attacks, attacks the pilot. pilot. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Holy crap, there's a cat in here. Ah, we're going down. <laughs> Get the cat off me. <laughs> oh, my god! <laughs> March 3rd, a passenger plane in Sudan turned back 30 minutes into the flight and made an emergency landing when a stray cat stowaway caused a ruckus. <laughs> or ruckus. <laughs> it's, an, it's a terrorist cat. <laughs> <laughs> it pulls out a gun. It's strapped. <laughs> no, it is the bomb. It is the bomb. <laughs> Release the kitties. Um, emergency landing when a stray cat stowaway caused a ruckus in the cockpit. Ruckus. The Tarko flight from Kertoyum to Doha, I'm sorry people about that, turned back after 30 minutes and made an emergency <laughs> landing in Karatom. <laughs> after the cat emerge, emerged in the cockpit. Emerged. Could you, <laughs> could you imagine? <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we have to turn this plane around. Uh, you're going to be late to seeing your Mimo because uh, there's a cat. Uh, here. We are having an emergency landing. I am getting cat scratched. Cat, cat scratch fever! <laughs> Where was I? Um, the crew attempted to capture the feline. Man, they, they, we, we've had a couple of stories now of people trying to catch Try, felines. Because cats are so good at running away from you. Dogs, yeah. dogs <clears throat> can run away from you, but you can normally corral a dog, and they aren't climbing up into weird places and yeah, stuff like and that. They don't have claws and, you know, I mean, they have teeth. They could bite you. They do, but that's only one area. Cats are, like, insane. <laughs> they're, they're like a Tasmanian devil. They're, like a, they're worse than a Tasmanian devil. The crew attempted to capture the feline, but the flight turned around when they found themselves unable to wrangle the stowaway. <laughs> Officials <laughs> said that the plane had been parked for cleaning <laughs> overnight before the flight, and the cat believed to be a feral stray most likely found a concealed space in the cockpit to sleep before being jostled awake when the plane went into that is, flight. That is bizarre that a cat can just get on a plane now. Yeah, it didn't even go through TSC or anything. I'm like, come on, people. Maybe it had, I bet it had a tube of toothpaste on it that was larger than 3.2 ounces. Yeah, and actually brought its water through the oh my TSC. Gosh. Or whatever Sudan has. TSC. Isn't that Tractor Supply Center? No. Yeah, TSC, Tractor Supply Center. Shut up, James. <laughs> Nobody asked you. 
Hey there, you got to go through Tractor Supply to get your... <laughs> Would you like to buy a little chick? It's the springtime, so we sell chicks and ducks. <laughs> you want a parrot? <laughs> uh, yeah, our local hardware has random animals, like parrots. and Yeah. Wait, yeah. what? I don't think I knew that. And Brian. Oh, my God. They actually have... I don't parrot? think he is... Um, for sale? I don't think he's for sale. He's just like the owner's pet. That but he they have in. a parrot in there and several. And so he'll you like walk by and he's like says random stuff to you. <laughs> he says naughty words. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he does, but that that would be um, interesting. All right. So some would say uh, that I have arguably a really terrible job. I'm a plumber, and Caleb has been delving into plumbing recently. <laughs> delving is a good word for it. <laughs> They've thrown him in uh, with a very small life vest. <laughs> into the deep end of plumbing. <laughs> Here's a hand auger. Go get it. <laughs> I don't want to. What do I have to do? <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I think I can agree, according to careeraddict.com, that these are the top 10 grossest jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10. If you've ever watched Jurassic Park 3, you, you probably cringed a little bit when you realized how young Eric came to collect T-Rex pee while stranded on the aisle. What? You don't remember that in Jurassic Park 3? I don't think I've ever seen Jurassic Park 3. It's a terrible, horrible movie. It's really stupid. At one point, there's a dream sequence where a raptor talks to Alan. Are you serious? It says, Alan! It's a raptor. And then he wakes up and he goes, Wah. It was. It's a really dumb movie. That being said, a pea collector is a very real job. And there are many areas you can specialize in. Oh, gosh. Pea collector, uh, this large word, pea collectors, for example, lay down large plastic sheets or attach plastic bags to poles and hope to catch <laughs> ape urine samples to study the factor, the factors and effect of reproduction. <laughs> I have such an easy job. <laughs> Dear you. Where do you think they're going to pee at? <laughs> well, my master. Ah, dang it. <laughs> Dear urine farmers, on the other hand, are tasked with collecting and selling Bambi's urine to deer hunters who use this scent to attract other deer. Bam. Loin. <laughs> Loin venison with broccoli and Stilton puree. Stilton? That, whatever. And red wine sauce. Sounds good to me. It does. Not the not the pee, but the, the the food. Now, not far not far beyond that is the manure inspectors. The job of a manure inspector is really straightforward. <laughs> they are tasked with collecting if farm animal poop and testing the samples to make sure they are free from contaminants, so that any harmful materials do not spread to infect vegetation, animals, or customers like you and me. I mean, that one's a, that one's not so bad. That one. I mean, most, for the most part, it's already on the ground. So all you have to do is slap a pair of gloves on. Pick it up, throw it in a bag, and away you go. Now, I have never personally uh, thrown up on a roller coaster, but vomit collectors. Roller coasters can often be a stomach-churning experience, and mm. the accounts of people throwing up after, and sometimes endearing, the ride are plentiful. I'm certain there's video footage on YouTube and evidence of this, but let's not look that up. No, let's not look that up. The question, though, is who cleans up the vomit? <laughs> At this theme park, <laughs> that would be Mr. Owens, who was hired in 2009 to keep the park's most extreme ride, Saw, the ride vomit free. He has to keep the, Saw the ride vomit free. That's right. Mr. Owens' job description is to clean people's vomit, which in 2008 <laughs> estimated 150 liters. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> this must be an awful ride. <laughs> Over 619 sick shutdowns. At least gets <laughs> he gets to ride the roller coaster when he's not picking up chunks. Oh, okay. So I have a weakness. It's not poop. It's not pee. It's snot and vomit, I think, are my two weaknesses. 
mainly snot. Like I just can't take <laughs> snot. So I'm pretty sure I've said that before. I you but. have because it's I think it gets me too because our dog we were about to walk out the door we were about to leave to go somewhere and we put our dog in the kitchen so she can't do anything apparently she wasn't feeling well because right, we're like Olivia had walked up to start the car I had just put the dog down in her bed and was walking to the door and I just hear it, huh and I look back and she just went Bleh, and like opened her mouth and just a geyser. Kind of just geyser waterfall of saliva and puke came out. I was like, "Why?" Mm. Well, we weren't. We couldn't leave her in it. Yeah, obviously. So I had to clean it up, and I deal with Some horrible stuff things. every day. Smells, whatever. But cleaning that up, thinking about it now, hits my gag reflex. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just <laughs> throw up is gross. Yeah, throw up and snot and stuff. It's just. It's the worst. Now, see, they put my job as number one. Not only is the most disgusting jobs in the world, but it's the most dangerous. Okay, so this is different. This is sewer cleaners. So this is that someone, would be someone who level. goes into like the huge, like huge sewers and cleans them. And they have to climb in often chest deep filled with human excrement and occasionally dead dogs, rats, and other material scraps, okay. brooms, and even their bare hands to clean the drainage situation. No smart person would use their bare hands. No, but I don't think they're talking about this country because it's three fifty per day. Three fifty? Three dollars and fifty cents a day. Okay, yeah, that's definitely not these this brave country. souls have to cook body parts. My goodness, if you thought you had the worst job in the world, think again. There's always someone worse off than you. So be, be so think of these brave souls when you have to cook body parts. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> who oh, who have to cook body parts, climb chest deep into sewers and give <laughs> give bulls hand jobs for a living. That was when I missed. Oh, well, that that is an actual individual. The last one I was going to talk about is uh, the crime scene cleaner. And that's, it's, that's a really weird one because they actually are tasked with a lot of other stuff. So, like, uh, I follow, there's a page on Instagram where it's called crime, yeah, crime Scene Cleanup. I think it's called Crime Scene Cleaning Inc. or something like that. It's a company out of some state. I don't know, actually. But they post pictures of different cleanup jobs. But they don't just do crime scene cleanup. Like, they'll post, like, suicide or... A, a woman died in her home, and this is like when someone dies and they sit for a long time, they have to like cut up the floor and joists to get the smell out. Mm. It's gross. But something else don't think about is uh, hoarders. They go into hoarders' houses and clean up hoarders' stuff. Mm. Like not necessarily. They do hazmat stuff. How about that? They do. The hazmat uh, makes sense because then you never know what kind of dangers you're going to get into somebody's no. house because you don't know what people collect. No, not really. Because we humans are gross. Can be really weird. Extremely so. And sometimes very creepy. Anyways, speaking of that. Speaking of humans being creepy. So, James, how much would you pay for whale vomit? Whale, whale vomit. vomit. Well, we just talked about how I feel about vomit, so yep. probably nothing. No, probably nothing. All right. So I, then we're going to jump into this lovely little story here about <laughs> whale vomit. Yeah. <laughs> this is also one of the worst jobs, apparently, collecting whale vomit. Actually, this is very. This is actually a really interesting story. Th- think about that when you're swimming next time in the ocean. You're having a good time playing with your kids, building a sandcastle, going swimming, and then... Just remember, there's animals throwing up. Yeah, yeah, see? What is that? That's that, whale That's whale vomit. It looks like a, a chunk of lard. It looks like a po- giant potato. That, that, yeah, or it's a rock. It's about this big and this tall, why, whatever. It's about, it looks like a potato. Anyways, Saporian stumbled upon an unusual mass in Thailand and decided she would drag it back to her home Okay, so just for starters, <laughs> this is all in kilometers and grams and stuff. So, uh, yeah, you can tell it's from a different area than we live in. Decided to drag it back to her home half a kilometer away before realizing realizing it was a valuable, I'm going to try to pronounce this right, ember grass. Ember grass. 
the lucky woman found a huge lump believed to be an expensive whale vomit, wa- whale vomit washed up near her beach house. What? While walking along the beach after a rainstorm, when she noticed the strange mass near her house, she walked up closer to the substance. It's like a mile, it's like a mile away. It's quite a ways. Uh, to have a look and found a, it had a fishy smell. Gross. Thinking that it could be something she could sell, the 49-year-old dragged it back to her house and was around 500 meters away from the beach. Again, using random words. (laughs) The oval-shaped lump weighed 7 kilograms and was about 12 inches wide and 24 inches long. Wait, what? Why are they switching this up? No, this is still the same. It's still the same. Inches are not the same as... Did it say inches? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> they, they can't get their stuff straight. <laughs> Either you stick to metric. I, I think or it's. St- I think it's because it's English, and so they. So they actually want to say stone and whatever. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Based on previous sales, what the heck? The weight would give the vomit, also known as why embergras, why I think is how it's, an estimated value of around one hundred and eighty-six thousand five hundred quid. What is this for? Why would you <laughs> spend that much money? Okay, it, it, it makes sense. I really had a genuine amber grass. I'm pretty sure I'm saying it right, but I can't be sure. I can't help my uh, community once I, buy, once I find a buyer for it. So she's excited to help her community. I feel lucky to have found such a large piece. I hope it will bring me money. <laughs> I'm keeping it safe in my house, and I have asked a local council to visit to check on it. Uh, See, so you scroll down here. Why? Yeah, it, this is the yeah, this is the interesting part. It looks like a moldy potato. It does. It looks or disgusting. It looks like a, a giant chunk of fat is it, what it looks yeah. like. The woman asked her neighbors for help identifying the object. Was shocked when someone told her that it could be a rare substance. What? To further check with the lump was actual amber grass. They held a naked flame to some of the parts, which caused it to melt. It hardened again after cooling. The waxy lump also had a fishy smell and other indications. It's just, it's just weird. Did they explain why this is expensive? Yes, they do. I'm trying to find it. Yeah, she, he's, he's scrolling through website, which has what it's about 90% ads and 10% story. Ambergras is produced by sperm whales when bile ducts in the (laughs) gastrotestical, gastrotestical, Intestinal. I'm sorry. It's more. It's early. <laughs> Track me. <laughs> yeah, dang. This got stuck in my testicles. <laughs> that's how. That's how the sperm whale do. Uh, t- Track makes secretions to ease the passage of large, sharp objects. I mean, so like if I they swallow I a fish that. or something, it like co- coats around it so they can get rid of it easier. The whale then vomits the mucus which solidifies and floats on the surface of the ocean. That's so weird. And, of course, the rest of it, it's here somewhere. So, since my thing's being stupid, basically, they use it in very expensive perfumes. We use a lot of weird stuff in perfume. and st- Why? What is it for? I'm so perplexed. Okay, I'll bring it next time. I'll bring, I'll bring more information oh, gosh. on that. Cause I so it was like- 100... I don't think vomit's worth anything, but apparently it's worth $185,000, according to these people here. For, for a big chunk of vomit, yeah, it's worth some money. So keep in, when you guys are walking <laughs> the beaches out there of wherever Thailand. you're at... <laughs> wherever... They, I don't know, wherever the the whales go by. <laughs> wherever the whales go by. Not Make the Ozarks. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to check for whale vomit. Make sure to check for whale vomit. It looks like a chunky fat <sighs> potato with the peelings gone. Oh, gosh. Because <sighs> you could just make some money. I love how she just, I bet she just picked it up. Yeah, she's like, what is this? It might be, <laughs> what I've is this thing? It. Let's just go. She dr- she said she drug it back. Uh, I like how we're both like. Uh. Well, I did I did talk about the grossest jobs. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for more great content like this, be sure to check us out on 
uh, <laughs> iTunes, Google Play, Podbean, oh and gosh. YouTube. Uh, give us a like on uh, on in YouTube. Like it. Like the video right now. Like, like it. it. Go like it. Yeah, no, you want to. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content. And uh, be sure to, you know, give a green screen suggestion. And also like us on, go rate us on iTunes. iTunes is good, too. We, have, we only have like four ratings. So go, go rate us on iTunes. And uh, if you can send me proof of it and I can Shh, see it. Don't tell people how many we've got. Just be like, go rate I, us on iTunes because we're I, awesome. I will read your, your rating on the show. And I will PayPal you a dollar. PayPal dollar. Or Venmo, whatever you choose. So Venmo. thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to check us out on all those things. Oh, my. And <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, James. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wrap this up quick. <laughs> Before other horn noises come out. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> These metal chairs hide nothing. <laughs> they don't. We need pillows. <laughs> we need pillows to hide our farts. I, I think the best part is the mic probably didn't pick it up, but I can hear it because it vibrated too. Oh, man. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Have a wonderful morning, noon, or night. Uh, see ya.